start every day with an earthquake is, is how that's how my how my 2020 is yes it's how my 2020 is rolling uh, oh. as per usual uh it's there's three of us here in a in in a podcast thing um i'm jazz sequence and with me is uh binary gary and allison plus and together we're binary jazz where allison brings the topic and Gary and I try to figure out what it is. And it's probably not quarantine, virus, or earthquake related. But what a way to wake up, right? Like, that's what I remember it's from twice. being in California. Yeah, it's not good. It's time to move, Chris. We had one. Uh, Will you quit it? We had, we had one uh, not last night, but the night before, I think, too. No, maybe it was last night. I don't know. I, I don't really think of Still Utah. aftershocks as, from the first one. Yeah, I don't think of Utah as an earthquake place, so. Yeah, we don't have them as often as, as California, but we definitely have faults. Um, and we're not built for uh, earthquakes like California. We're like, we're like where California was before 1989, where all the buildings, you know, are made out of brick and going to fall down. Yeah. Well, it's because they haven't been shaken and destroyed yet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's you got that going for you. Yeah. I mean, I got lots of cool historic it. buildings. That's the great thing about <clears throat> that's the great thing about dogs is that you can just be like, "Let's do this. Let's go." And then they're like, "Yeah," and they like leave the room, and then the door he, shuts, and they're he like, "Ran out the door, and like the door was closing, and I heard his like him like slam on the brakes and slide. Like, wait, what the hell? Wait, Where's we're not people? all going." <laughs> I just <sighs> I know <laughs> we're at the I can't even uh, stage of uh, of 2020 yeah god that is so accurate I've been documenting my baking a lot I've been documenting your baking well good yeah, so that's good in what way are you documenting your baking just pictures my family Slack channel, the food food portion is blowing up lately. Yeah. <laughs> have to I, have to keep up. I was imagining like you're taking photos with a Polaroid camera and attaching them to a leg of a carrier pigeon, and out the window it goes. I don't know why you need to throw a carrier pigeon. It's got wings. You just open the window and release <laughs> Give them a little, it. It's not like it's like a paper you need to push. Point. Yeah. <laughs> they need a little. little oh, nut. what was that movie I watched? I watched a movie where they uh, threw carrier pigeons. I yeah. Um, was that Amazon? Arrow. Uh, it was called, it was called The Aeronauts on Amazon Prime. I mean, that wasn't the entire theme of the movie. In fact, it wasn't even a theme movie at all. It just was a thing that happened. It wasn't about throwing carrier pigeons. That would be a very short and boring movie, I feel. Um, this was about hot air balloons. It's Which a good is movie. Much, I mean, much better than throwing carrier pigeons. Um, well, hopefully they started to fly after the throw. <laughs> it was. It's like the early days of hot air ballooning and meteorology, and uh, it's it was it's a fun little ditty. It's what? How long is it? Let's see. It's a hundred and one minutes. You don't have to commit to a lot. It's it's decently engaging. It's very escapist. That's all I have to say about that. It's, decently, I mean, like decently engaging and relatively escapist is is where we're at as as a culture right now. Kid, <laughs> kid friendly, <laughs> kid friendly, non offensive. You know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. How am I gonna do this? What the hell? What are you gonna do? Uh, I'm all nervous. I'm like, it's, it's it's a mystery. Yes, it is a mystery. We can't afford the rights if you're going to play it. Oh, no. No, no. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Um, I thought that I could do this. 
Oh, something else I did this past week was I taught my family, my parents, how to use Zoom. So that was a treat. And then also my dad's like pretty excited about Zoom backgrounds. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, just wait until you show him snap camera. That's, that's what I wanted to do. You're living in the upside down. Yes. Yes. I don't have the, the ability to do cool backgrounds in Zoom in Linux. Mm. Uh, but you can turn your... So. And you can turn your. But I can hang down. from the ceiling. For our listeners who don't follow along on the video, um, <laughs> first, excellent choice. <laughs> <laughs> Gary is now upside down, while Chris and I remain right side up, but only, only in theory. <laughs> I'm back. It was confusing because I moved my head and instead of moving the opposite direction, it moved the correct direction, but a little disorienting. If I were upside down and not mirrored, it would be, oh wait, that's not, I don't know if it's mirrored or not. I feel like that definition gets a little cloudy. Yeah, I think, I think if you're upside down, you would need to not be mirrored because being upside down would sort of. Yeah, but I think that I can. I don't know. I'm, I'm confused thing. not thinking about it now. Yeah, so that, that to me appears to be the correct way, but I don't know if that's really appears to you to be the correct way. Oh, and I can't rotate the mirror at the same time? But also, like, you... you um... I'm a little earthquake here, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I want to be like, we all need to get out more. <laughs> Uh, I have a mask. <laughs> I have a pretty, Rhonda's made a couple uh, really great ones. Like a bandana, like yellow paisley that loops over the ears, fabric one, looks good. And I have a teal one that straps around behind the head. And that's the most exciting that's happened in the last three weeks. Um, I also, we, we came into possession of like four, no, three decades, four decades? Three or four decades of um, National Geographic magazines about a year ago yeah wow. did my mom give them to you because we have some, we have a lot in our garage <laughs> well the problem is um you know we're moving and um i don't really have the desire to pack up 6300 pounds of national geographics mm -hmm. uh, but they have yeah we had that we had that realization months. we had that realization with my collection of like five or six years worth of wired magazine when we were moving and aaron's yeah. like i don't want to pack this shit i'm like all right. You're like, yeah. You have, you have to like think back. When was the last time I referenced one of those? I didn't. It's just cool to have. And yeah. I and I was, I was like, part of me was thinking like, oh, but I could have like the Wired magazine from the month and year of our kid's birth. Like, because I knew that they, like people used to do like the Rolling Stone magazine of the month and year. Well, but, moving two but, is a lot better than five years. But, but, but I why? Think, I, I think don't... that's reasonable. <laughs> Yeah, but My even, mom ended even up that, like, that I couldn't with... justify keeping even just those two because, like, for what purpose? It's not yeah. even sentiment. It's just, here's a thing from the market. What I was going with this is that you can buy that. You could probably buy it on eBay if you wanted it at some point. Yeah, I'm so sure. On all these uh, National Geographics on eBay. So if you're looking for six-month sets of National Geographic, just look it up on eBay. Buy it from me or someone else. They're cheap. But um, so what are you going to do with your, are you going to donate them to like a school or a university or something or? Uh, the ones that, I, so they literally, literally are listed on eBay because in my poking mm -hmm. around, like maybe a school is a good idea, actually. In my poking around, it didn't seem that anybody that I think would want them would want them. Like the library's like, oh no, we're good. Um, <laughs> we, we, we already have like- We have a road. From, yeah. Um, when all yeah, else fails, like- you know? art schools people who do yeah. collage yes I know that was that's not like ideal if you want to like be like oh they're pristine and historical but like oh no will... none of that yeah i want them to be i want these to be used objects so um yeah so we've sold about three years worth on nice. ebay which means there are still i actually should show you this stack you will you you will need to share the link with us so we can put it in the show notes yeah maybe I'll a piece of gary that. memorabilia yeah can buy your own piece of Gary. <laughs> if you um, buy it and let me know that you're a show listener, I will include um, something fantastic. An autographed a letter. An autographed uh, portrait of Gary. A handwritten letter thanking you for your purchase. Um, 
Oh, you know, I am cleaning out like old pictures. So maybe a high school picture. An autographed interested. high school picture of Gary. Free to any I'm gonna buy one jazz now. listener <laughs> oh, God. who wants to buy six months of old National Geographics. I need to poke around. You ship internationally? <laughs> yeah, why not? I mean, I don't think on eBay I do, but what year do you want? What year and month? Allison gets a special dispensation for, for shipping. I get a discount. <laughs> Oh, so I should probably bring forward the topic. I mean, I guess. I guess. Um, so I am a little unsure on how to pronounce this because I still haven't heard anyone else say it. Hmm. I've only read it. Um, and like in casual, I don't have anybody to like ask really other than my partner. So it's not a real good fo like focus group of how to pronounce things. <laughs> so I'll do my best. It's Poyamanon, and I will spell it. Yes, please. <laughs> Seems like a pretty thing to do. <laughs> well, and I feel like I'm only pronouncing it that way because of the Muppets. I'm like, Poyamanon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was where it was going to go, so. It's good we got that out of the system to start with. <laughs> um, P-O-I-O-U-M-E-N. O N. Oh, M E N O N. That's not what I thought the end was going to be like. What did you uh, think the end was going to be like? <laughs> Manamana? Like, like homonym or something. I don't know. I thought there was a Y in there, stuck in there somewhere. I, 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 thought it, I thought it would be, I thought the end of the word would be spelled like phenomenon. <laughs> Every word that has that rhythm triggers the. Dude, rest know, of the sorry. sound in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenon. Yeah. Dude, 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 dude. Phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's a, like a kind of like a, a pasty food in Hawaii, right? Some sort of roast pork involved. <laughs> How many stereotypes can we stick in here? <laughs> I think it's pink. I don't know. Um, Is it, is it, um, is it a color? It's probably a color. That'd be amazing. Wouldn't it? I would buy that at Home Depot, not knowing. <laughs> well, I mean, like, if you saw a paint chip with yes. that name on it, that would be intriguing. Totally. I'm not sure if it would be intriguing to me for the same reason it would be intriguing to you since you know what it means and I don't. So maybe it would be <laughs> more or less intriguing after I find out what it means. I just but, don't know what color it would be. Yeah. Green. Green. As it is a form of envy. A form of envy. Mm -hmm. um, it is... Uh, so how would one describe the word phenomenon, first of all, uh, other than it's a thing? It's, it's a, a thing. thing. It's a thing. Obviously. That's, it's pretty solid. Pretty solid. It's a thing of wonder sometimes. So a poyamanon. Poyuman poy poy You know pow pow. It really is it really, <laughs> <laughs> it really is one of those things where I was just like, I don't know how to pronounce it. Maybe I shouldn't use it as a topic. And then I was like, but it popped up like several times for me and I was just like, no. It's, after the third time I was like, Nope, we're doing this. It's it's faded. I, I like how I like how topics uh, for the show have like some connection to like divination, like <laughs> like if it if it mystically comes like recurs, then that becomes like settled and set in stone. Like it's not just a thing that like like if it it's not like you, I'm gonna go look for a topic today. No, it has to like you know come into your your presence like more you know like needs to be a theme like yeah. I like those topics a lot more because then I can, I don't know, there's like a thread to something that's happened in the past week or the past whatever where I'm like, oh no, that's where, that's when I discovered phenomenon. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's a musical term. Wouldn't that be ideal? 
Um, sure. It's um, uh, poyamenon uh, is a musical term that that is like a single staccato note. Bum. No. Poyamenon. It's Bum. it's a it's a phrase that alternates um, two disparate time signatures, um, <laughs> back and forth between each measure. So like That's six eight. Niche. It's a four four. It's real niche. Yeah. <laughs> Like switching, switching from three four to five four to four four to five four to three four. Well, it can't be this. It can't be a common denominator. Like it needs to go from like a strict four four to like a six eight swung back and forth. Like it's. This is why I never bring music terms because I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> I'll be laughed right out of the room. <laughs> Phenomenon. Um. <laughs> Maybe it's the phenomenon of converting any <laughs> word to that melody <laughs> coined by uh, a Muppeteer. Yeah, so phenomena needs to be in the show notes. Men, uh, men, uh... I know, I mean, like, we all have to go watch it now. Yeah, I need a new ringtone. I do too. I don't know uh, why. Like my phone is always on silent. What would be? A, what purpose would a ringtone serve me? That's actually a really good idea. I could make that my ringtone. I've had. I've had. Um, so my ringtone has been the the um, chant for uh, Rail Salt Lake since I could make a ringtone. Uh, yeah, basically, that's fun. Yeah. Um, but like, since we don't go to games anymore, and we. Um, we like have season tickets for the Royals. Like I've been thinking that I should probably change it to something else. I, um, I feel like I've probably told this story before, but if not, or if I have, sorry, you have to hear it again. Um, <laughs> you know, in uh, office space, when they're destroying the printer mm -hmm. and the song, damn, it feels good to be a gangster comes on. Mm. That was my ringtone where I used to work. Cause it was funny, you know, and I was getting calls all the time. So, I mean, I, I would change my ringtone pretty re regularly at that point. That was my ringtone. Um, and I was, uh, I had to go get windshield wipers one day <laughs> and I had Katie with me. And so I had her on my left arm and my cell phone was in my pocket and I'm in line with Katie and the windshield wipers at this automotive store and my phone rings and there's nothing I can do about it. So <laughs> I'm just standing there like, you know, someone's um, phone is going off. <laughs> And then I get to the front and the lady at the register is like, sir, would you like help installing these? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was pretty fantastic. Um, and then I'm like, I need to consider this. Somebody, um, somebody tweeted uh, recently, because I spend all my time on Twitter instead of reading the news, um, that... Uh, you should replace the word gangsta in music with the word Easter uh, for like humor. So like, damn, it feels good to be an Easter. <laughs> um, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember like what the next stanza is because that's the only part I can remember, but it was, uh, it was definitely like very awkward for me to have that as my ringtone and you know, so. totally inappropriate. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. And I mean, I, just, I, mean, I just stood there like, <sighs> <laughs> Contemplating your life choices, everything that led up to that moment. Yeah. You want to be like, it's meant to be right. funny. <laughs> well, seriously, the, the, at work, the guys think it's hysterical. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're uh, surrounded by, by African Americans like, uh-huh, <laughs> good on you. It's hysterical. <laughs> um, I've been <laughs> saving up for a new phone, and now that Apple has released their new like whatever special se generation <laughs> two or whatever the crappy yeah. name for it is i might be going for that and i think i would go into the the world of ringtones because my ringtone now is just some boring <laughs> so, uh, cha -cha so pro method. tip pro tip uh ringtones need to be an m for r file but an oh. M4R file is just an M4A file that's renamed. Oh. So if you can convert an MP3 or any sort of audio file into an M4A, you can just rename yeah. M4A to M4R, and then you have a ringtone. Which that's you can amazing. do in iTunes. 
you can just okay. do the conversion. These are all good right tips. Thanks, gang. <laughs> uh, that phone is pretty rocking. It's super I think I'm gonna. And... It depends on how much money I have after my taxes, but um, yeah, it. I think it's my best option, and honestly, I feel like it really gets the job done for what I need from a phone. And you don't and need, also, a, you don't a, need huge, a phablet. It's also a huge step up from where I, I've been. So are you, are you on a five still? I'm on a six S. Yeah. So then it I, I had a six uh, that died uh, about a year ago. And so like my replacement options were really lame and I ended up going with the XR or whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, ten, I'm like, R, but I can't, I can't say that without saying XR either. I, and I'm like, I can't imagine like a need to replace this phone for many, 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 many years. Like, yeah, I was going to... The camera's was, way more than I need. There's more storage than I need. It's fast. I like the face unlock thing, although, you know, great, whatever. Now I need some more systems. I feel like but, I might prefer a, th a thumb unlock versus the face. I For some reason, the face thing really weirds me out. It, it weirded me out for five minutes, but then, like, it's so much faster. Yeah. Like, like look, like, because it, because it, it, conforms to like the way that you normally look at your use your phone like you know you like you pick it up and you look at it and immediately it recognizes you you know I as opposed that's the thing that bothers me I'm it like, is I don't yeah want but it, it does it doesn't recognize other people though <laughs> like i, but I don't I, even I want can't, it to recognize I can't me unlock, i want like, i can't unlock aaron's phone like you know like so it's, i want my phone yeah, and me, myself to be strangers <laughs> let me let me explain it. the phenomenon though that that sucks about this and that is when you get up in the morning and your like face is all puffy and you go to use your phone, your phone's like, I don't know who you are. And then you're like, oh fuck. That is it really that? I, sure I it can't doesn't. I can't face unlock in the morning. Yep. That that yep. doesn't happen it's, to me. What does happen it's to me? It's about ten or fifteen minutes before my face will unlock it. What what does happen to me is when I'm waiting in line at Costco uh, and I'm wearing my mask, uh, it obviously it doesn't recognize me when I have half of my face covered. It's it's yeah. bizarre. So but like are glasses an an issue? No. I don't Unless. know that we've tested. Uh, I don't know that Aaron has tested unlocking with and without glasses. Um, I, I know that you can. You're... I know that you can train it to recognize more than one face. Oh, okay. like you so if your glasses were like really extreme or something, well, you could test it with glasses and without if you needed to. It yeah. it um it does a good job for me with and without glasses though. Like oh. it yeah. doesn't. I didn't. Do, I I only did like the recognition with my glasses on, and it somehow was like with my glasses off. It's like yeah, close enough. <laughs> look like Gary come on in <laughs> yeah it, it, except for in the morning when it's like buddy I don't know who you think you are but this is not yours <laughs> <laughs> or it's just regulating you and being like you're not awake enough yet to be handling a phone oh I wish I had a phone that told me that I wasn't I like you're not responsible enough to be dealing with me right now so I'm just gonna yeah. stay locked you're not I, in it like if I had a phone that like measured mood and was just like look this is just you know what? Go do a drawing. Like, do some like art. those those twelve thirty a.m. drunk tweets. Like they just need to not go out. They can just wait until the morning, or not at yeah. all. Isn't there an app or a plugin though that stops that can stop that sort of nonsense? I'm sure there is. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, I would just create a bot that diverts the tweets to that specific bot. <laughs> oh, that's a cool idea. Like if you tweet between certain times that you have a bot that deletes that tweet from your primary and puts it on your other account. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still a record, but it's yeah. just. Yeah. It's like a, a different Netflix It's like, it's like 12 a.m. Chris versus yeah. like normal Chris. You're like at binary dairy dash not sober. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there needs, I think we need to make a, a, uh, a horse eBooks uh, style bot that um that that combines all of our tweets uh and and is just like binary jazz not sober that'd be hilarious um, the reason i look at my phone early in the morning is um well obviously it's off all night and um i want to make sure like i didn't miss any calls from family like it's this weird thing that years ago when we had a bunch of ill folks in the family like i had left the phone on at night and I would check in the morning to make sure, you know, not be a died overnight. Um, and uh, so now, like, I feel like I, it's just that thing. Like, I got to check every morning to make sure, like, oh, nobody tried to get a hold of me last night. Um, I don't always do the work email thing in the morning. I always do the news. Just confirm that, you know, people are still where they're supposed to be or a 
ostensibly what I expect. I've been, um, so we have a newspaper. We subscribe to Salt Lake City, the Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, but since uh, coronavirus, I have been reading the, like my morning ritual, part of my morning ritual is spending some time like reading the news and getting up to, up to date, whatever is in the news. Uh, and I have been so uninterested in knowing what is going on outside the walls that I have instead just been scrolling on Twitter because that, I don't know, there's more endorphins involved. Mm, valid. Um, I deleted I really... all the links on my phone for uh, COVID-19 news. Staying up to date. Yeah. I don't really... O opposite of staying up to date. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like, well... I, I think I can probably a lot tell of you when it's safe by looking at how many cars leave and come into my neighborhood. <laughs> and people walking. I kind of just listen to Trudeau's daily thing at 11 and then, like, kind of go on my way. Does that, does yeah. that not get, like, repetitive? Like, does he not, like, does he change it up like i just can't imagine like no it's not doing it fascinating. every single day no but like yes I, have, I haven't watched any any of them i including the one i did wait i did watch the one where he um said moist yes <laughs> yes but only that part only that 30 second clip that clip was hilarious of him being like whatever he said and then just being like oh, that's a moist air yeah <laughs> i was like Mo this moist, is a yeah. moist breath or Speaking something moistly. yeah Speaking I, moistly, yeah. There was another great clip of him going around of when he does question and answers with the press. And then it's just like, there's this long silence. And then he goes, Cynthia, I think you're on mute. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she goes, you're right, I am. <laughs> like, you can hear her, like, click in. And just, but there's this long, like, 15-second period of him just at the podium being like, I what, can't hear like, you. <laughs> That's fantastic, though. Imagine having, like, yeah. a competent leader of your country. <laughs> like, yeah. imagine, so that, imagine that, yes. Yeah. Imagine so someone jealous. knowing that someone else is on mute. <laughs> or, or even your state, you know. I mean, I mean our city. president would be likely to mute somebody else, to uh, a reporter, if he had the option. So that's, that's where we're at. <laughs> Oh, but like to answer your question, they're like pretty repetitive, so I don't hit all of them. I just look for the summary. Um, but I listen to the ones that were he's supposed to announce something a bit important, like they're doing the whole um, like kind of like recuperation compensation thing. So they announced that initially, and now they've expanded the requirements a bit to include people who are still working a little. So. I wanted to listen in and see if what those requirements were and stuff like that. So. Yay, Canada! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I learned recently that um, that our Canadian employees aren't employees; they're contractors because they don't have a, I guess, a registered business in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking about that in, in conjunction with, with potentially moving there, like that would change things, but then would it change things? And I don't know, but I have more questions now than I would have otherwise about that. Not that I don't want to do it still, but like I have questions now. Um, yeah, of how that would go. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, that's not, uh, that's not the phenomenon that we're... That we're uh... Oh, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have any Allison questions, but anyway, a phenomenon is a specific type of metafiction in which the story is about the process of creation. So sometimes the creation of the story itself. So like a so story- So say that one more time, make sure I understand this. Uh, so like a, um, a specific type of metafiction in which the story is about the process of creation, sometimes the creation of the story itself. Okay. So it's like a story about writing a story. So if you saw, and like to tie it into why this even came up in my life, I finally saw the most recent version of Little Women in which they take the story of Little Women and make it into a phenomenon. So like uh, The Princess Bride. No, not really. 
that's a story that's a story about telling the story yeah that's an that's an interesting example though because it's it's meta in that way but not about the creation and i think right. the creation part is like a key in this what movie would be a good example of this little women i just said i know i know but a movie that i've seen i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> well gary well, first of all you should see little women <laughs> yeah i'm like up to about 2014 right now in movies so um, it's going to be a couple years is big fish good... one of those Oh, me? Well, but that's like, again, the telling. I'm trying to think. He's relaying the story of his father, but it's like the actual story is. Or his father's relaying. That's such remember. a good movie. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about other examples. What year did Little Women come out, the most recent one? 2019. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've got about five years. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen the 90s version? It's no. not the same because they don't take it and kind of tilt it in the same way as the most recent one. But Now I'm trying oh. to think of other examples. The mailman. Male person. She's not a man. She's great. She's here early today. Usually I see her when I'm walking with the kids and we wave and chat across the road. That just reminds me of uh, the... Uh man who has it all twitter account oh yeah <laughs> what do you think uh or male or male male women what do you think <laughs> how do you do <laughs> <laughs> many 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 years ago uh men I, working um, from home what's your opinion <laughs> i uh here's some other examples oh wait but these are all literary examples um, that's okay i might i might have read or be familiar with it. Uh, Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children, Lawrence Stern's Tristam Shandy, Nabokov's Pale Fire, um, Doris Lessing's The Golden Notebook, I've never heard of that, William Golding's Paper Men. Mm. Well, these William, are all like old... William Golding, yeah, but William Golding wrote uh, Princess Bride, so there's the connection there. Oh, interesting. Anyway. I can I can go down this rabbit hole so much more, and I don't need to do it right now. <laughs> so we do have uh, we did get a while ago. I think unless I deleted it. No, I didn't delete it. Okay, uh, good. We did get feedback uh, on March sixth. Uh, such such feedback. wonderful wonderful days. Early March. It was a different time then. Uh, and apparently, apparently at that time, uh, we were contacted by Louisa and, uh, she, wa she wanted this to know, she wanted to know, Jeez. are you seeking powerful online promotion and delivers real results? Sorry to bug you on your contact, board, but actually that was the whole point. We can send your promotional text to websites through their contact pages. Just like you, just like you're getting this message right now. You can target by keyword or just start bulk blasts to sites in the country of your choice. So let's say you would like to blast a message to all the plumbing companies in the USA. We'll grab, com we'll grab websites for only those and post your advertisement to them. Providing you're promoting a product or service that's relevant to the, that niche, you'll, be, that you'll then be blessed with an amazing response. Send a reply to John2830bro <laughs> to find out oh my more goodness. info <laughs> and pricing. <laughs> First of all, I hate when people use the verb blast <laughs> to refer to like i just don't i'm like no count me out <laughs> so louisa the way that we like to respond to uh emails that we get to the show uh, as as you know current as listeners of the show will know is we like to read them aloud and then talk about them and answer them in, in video and or podcast form. So, uh, Louisa, if you're listening, we are not interested in your service, nor in John's service, uh, whoever he. John2830bro is, <laughs> and however he's related to you. <laughs> that wasn't the email address that it came from, by the way. It wasn't the bro email address. It was a, it was a Louisa dot whatever email address. So, so, who knows how John is related, but John's in there somehow. Uh, so we're not we're not really interested. We don't really have anything to advertise. What was Louisa's last name? Uh, I did not mention it. Okay, it's not bro though. It's not bro. 
Okay, I thought maybe John Bro and Louisa Bro were. No, no. Uh, I would change my last name. <laughs> if your last name was Bro, you would change it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I had a I had a friend in I had a friend in high school whose last name was Dick, and so uh, she was Jennifer Dick, um, but her sister changed her last name to Richards because she did not want her last name to be Dick. I think that's valid. I, There's only so much character building you can do. I always found it interesting, though, that, like, like one of them's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm like, I'll just deal with it. And the other one's like, nope. Nope, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I never really considered this one. Uh, so I was in college and, like, you know, people were dumb. Um, but there was a, a girl in my uh, program in class whose last name was Cox, C-O-X, which is, seems harmless. But it does seem uh, harmless. Yes, but then I heard someone harassing her, and I'm like, what the actual fuck? Like, seriously? <sighs> oh, I think oh, I gotta go cool. sign for something. <laughs> oh, no. It's and this is when the podcast door. goes on the road to the front door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is, it, what is it delivering? What is it? It's not my normal mail delivery person. It's, uh, it's a foreign guy. delivery person. Well... She's definitely earned some time off. I'm working hard. That's that's legit. That's fair. So I yeah, I did actually go to Costco <laughs> yesterday. Um, and I will say that going to Costco versus going anywhere else in the world, like you actually feel like people are taking things seriously going to Costco. And then you go to a different store, a grocery store of some other kind, and you feel like the world is doomed. Mm. Um, like there were people, there were there's like at least forty to fifty percent of of people shopping at Costco wearing masks of some kind. Uh, they're doing like enforcing social distancing when you're getting your cart, and like um, limiting the number of people that can go in the store. Um, they had people like now they have people now monitoring the distance that customers keep between each other. Like they're literally wow. just standing there and being social distance monitors. They have a little sign on the saying like social distance six feet or something. Little like sash. Yeah. <laughs> Jaunty sash. <laughs> and they've they've rearranged they rearranged a couple things so that things so that things weren't clo uh, as close together as they they would otherwise mm -hmm. be. That reminds me of two things. It reminds me, I don't know why I'm waving a pocket knife at you. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I'm fidgeting, yeah. I, I had to get um, flea medicine for the cat the other day. And so I went to the uh, uh, vet and I didn't have my normal mask. So I had it on a bandana and it felt really weird. Like I felt like I was walking in to like hold up the place in a bandana <laughs> for flea medicine, a little awkward. The sign reminded me of though, here uh, a couple years back, we had election monitors in Florida because because Florida. Florida and uh but so this dude was standing there and he had a sign hanging around him that said I'm an election monitor and then he said please do not talk to me and he was just standing there and I'm like what I mean I don't know where on Craigslist you find that job but that's us. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. <laughs>